Before we get started, I just want to let you know about our sister company, Radio.co. Now, if you are looking to start a radio station, then you're going to want to listen to this because Radio.co is the best way of starting a radio station. You can go live, create playlists, and start the radio show of your dreams. And basically only takes about an hour. It's incredible. If you want to get started, simply head to Radio.co slash trial to get your seven day free trial. And yeah, take a look around the platform and see what you think. Hello there and welcome back to the Audio Insider podcast. It's been a while, but we are back and we have a brand new uh, look, a brand new vibe, brand new presenter kind of. Neve will be back, don't worry. Uh, but today you are joined by me, Rowan and James. Hi there, how's it going? Uh, so you, uh, you've you already met James. James was on the last episode of the podcast um, yeah. and today he's back and he'll be giving us all of the Audio Insider knowledge he has. Uh, so what's coming up on today's episode? Well, we're going to be talking about the Oasis ticket fiasco. You've probably heard about it. It's been in the news quite a lot recently. Uh, we'll be giving our two two cents. Is that the, is that the phrase? Yeah. Two cents? Yeah, we'll be giving our so. two cents on that. Uh, we'll also be talking about TikTok and more specifically whether or not TikTok is having a beneficial impact on the music industry. Um, this is an ongoing thing. Uh, and we'll be talking about the positives and negatives of um, marketing more specifically and how TikTok is helping in that area. And finally, uh, we'll be talking about the show itself, the Audio Insider show, and how our YouTube channel has uh, has changed. Uh, so we'll lead with that first, actually. And uh, James, I think... We're going to celebrate. Yeah, let's do it. Here we go. One, two, three. Hey! Oh! Oh, out wow. of time, but love, it's all right. I love the smell of it. They do. They smell good, it don't they? really good. It smells like a birthday party when you're like six. Yeah. I remember oh, once when I was about six, I was at a bowling party. Yeah. Someone tapped me on the shoulder and turned me and set one off in my face. Oh my God. I, that sounds I, quite, I think I cried after. Yeah, it sounds quite traumatic. <laughs> it was, you yeah, okay? Still, yeah, it's, <laughs> Does that bring back? It's, it's, still a, it's still a traumatic whenever I set one off. Wow. I don't know why we have party poppers in the office, but why not? No. I think every good office should have at least a few party poppers Absolutely. stashed away for events like this. You never know when you're going to need a party popper. Exactly. Popping. Spontaneous. Yeah, so... Um, Down to business then. Yeah, definitely. So Audio Insider, the podcast is back, um, but we have also launched um, a channel, a YouTube channel. Um, well, I say launched, it's not actually a new channel. Uh, no. James, I don't know if you want to explain more about what's happened. Yeah, so obviously I have been publishing content online for years and years and years. In fact, some of the earlier videos are from like 2010 when I was really young. And, um, you know, I've kind of, dipped in and out, um, but really sort of between about 2018, 19 and about 2022, I was publishing content every single week and it was t occupying a lot of time. And obviously along with running radio.co, Q, podcast.co, matchmaker, I decided it was time for a break. So at the start of last year, I announced I was quitting YouTube and I said, well, I'm not really quitting, but I'm going to continue publishing videos, yeah. you know, not every week, but once every now and again. And two sort of like best part of two years has gone past and basically haven't really done anything just because we've been very busy. So we were talking about launching a new brand, Audio Insider. And actually the full story is we kind of started publishing videos and we thought, well, we've got this YouTube channel sat there with 20,000 subscribers, yeah. all interested in audio. Um, we should probably just repurpose it because realistically, I don't, can't see myself, you know, taking up publishing videos regularly to YouTube again. So it's always good to to, to reignite uh, an old channel. We've we've taken the James Mulvaney branding off and we've put Audio Insider on. Yeah, leaving all the existing videos up there because some of them are still getting lots of traffic and generating leads for our business, which is really good. Um, and that's one of the reasons why you know perhaps you could should be considering using audio as well uh, or audio and video uh, within your business. Um, but yeah, we're going to be rebranding it. Well, we have rebranded it and we're going to be publishing new content. Some of it will feature me. Some of it will feature, um, you know, other members of the team like Rowan and Neve and, and so on and so forth. And um, it, the concept of it is really that it's going to be about audio as a, as a wider tool with less focus on just radio, um, but things like podcasts, audio books, and also talking about things like music and how music is using uh, you know, how the music industry is, is using online uh, as, a sort of as a tool for marketing, which is obviously what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really exciting. If you've not checked it out, go onto YouTube, type in Audio Insider. It'll come up. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on notifications. We've got lots of content already planned for the next few weeks. And uh, we'll continue to sort of push stuff out over the coming months. It's very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like, you, like you said before, um, we're going to be broadening our horizons 
as it were. We're yeah. going to be looking at uh, radio podcasts, music, audiobooks, basically anything audio related. If we yeah. think it relates to stuff like marketing, how you could market those things. Uh, and also just giving you sort of news and updates within the industries themselves. And we kind of wanted to reflect that in this podcast as well. Um, the past five episodes um, have all been very much radio related. Mm -hmm. um, they, those episodes were made by Radio.co, uh, which like to give more context, you are the founder of Radio.co. Mm -hmm. we, we work for Radio.co. Uh, but this is now going forward. It's entirely under the Audio Insider brand. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's exciting. And we thought this first episode, as we're now branching out, we would discuss uh, music more than anything else. Um, that's just kind of how it's worked out, actually. That's kind of what's in the news currently, these yeah. these two uh, things we were discussing. But yeah, it's uh, it's exciting times, and um, we've got loads of cool content to come. Um, yeah. Also, for anyone listening, if you want to find all the links to the various social profiles yeah. for Audio Insider, and also our newsletter which i'm going to be publishing on um via email and also on my linkedin profile the website is insider.audio yeah you type that in subscribe you'll get notified whenever we push out new content whenever we have a newsletter that's coming out um, well worth subscribing also it's free to join yeah, yeah. as well and the first one is live now that's just I literally believe. went live yeah, this morning literally. yeah yes, so, which is exciting cool stuff um yeah that's <clears> pretty much it for audio insider so we will crack on so, uh, yeah, as I said before, the first thing I'm going to be talking about today is um, Oasis. And more Oasis. specifically, the Oasis ticket disaster. Is that too strong a word? Or... I think we knew, I think, right, I mean, from my perspective, I, I, I didn't go and get tickets. I, right. I wouldn't like mind seeing them, but I'm not a super fan. No. Uh, but I believe you did, is that right? Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, yeah, my Saturday was quite stressful. Right. Uh, we'll go into it. We're, for a bit of context, a bit of background. So we've got two nice biased opinions here. Yes, like, yeah, not, definitely. Like... This, should be, this should be interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, last week, I think it was last week, wasn't it? Oasis announced um, a reunion after 20, uh, not 25, 15 years of um, not liking each other, shall we say? Not, <laughs> not being the best of friends. Falling out. Yeah. I think they were notoriously um, yeah. enemies almost. It was, yeah. yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how that goes because that was kind of their whole brand for the past 15 years. Yeah. But yeah, so um, they announced a reunion. They're going on tour next year. And on Saturday, just gone at 9 a.m., tickets went on sale on uh, Ticketmaster, Gigs and Tours, and Sea Tickets. Um, now, Ticketmaster is notoriously quite bad for high value volumes of traffic. It mm. crashes straight away. There's always long queues. This is not news. Um, but Gigs and Tours and Sea Tickets also came into the headlines because... As far as I'm aware, they did not function at all, all day. It, they, they had a system where every 30 seconds, the page refreshed, and if you got in or not, it was, it was completely down to luck. Uh, Ticketmaster just had queues of thousands of thousands of people. Yeah. Um, and all day, there was issues being reported. Uh, there was bot kickings. So essentially, people were just, it was claiming people were bots when they weren't and getting kicked. Uh, there was a queue to join the queue. Right. Which was interesting. And I always love those. Yeah, a queue that, to get into a queue. Absolutely. Yes. That is it's very British, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Very. Um and also The thing is though, there's kind of no way to, to push in, is there? You can't cheat no, this stuff. No, absolutely not. Um and there was also just people getting kicked out as soon as they got to the front. Yeah. So you get in, you're about to buy your tickets, and you get kicked out, and all of a sudden you're at the back of the queue. Obviously, all of those things aren't great. Um, but something else happened that has not really been highlighted before, and that is a thing called dynamic pricing. Have you, mm. have you discovered this before? I've never discovered it before, but I was aware of it because it was obviously widely yeah. reported in the media. Yeah, um, Sounds naughty, doesn't it? It is. Sounds, sounds it like, is. But it doesn't surprise me either. No, definitely not. So essentially what this is, is it's a system that comes into place when there is a, a high demand for tickets. Mm. So um, the Oasis tickets came on to sale for about 150 quid at the, the, the Manchester venue. Um, and people were reporting that even after like 10 minutes or so after being live, they were going up to about 350, I think, each. Yeah. So that is quite an increase. Um, and they call this dynamic pricing. They call this like uh, something like in demand. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so people weren't aware of this when they were in the queue. They got through. After hours, people were in the queue till like four o'clock, five o'clock. So that's... 10, 12 hours in a queue. Mm. I to, saw all the pictures, like, you know, people who haven't seen this in the media, perhaps they're listing over in the US. 
there was like people with these full on setups in their living room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm talking multiple computers, yeah, laptops, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, iPads, yeah. you know, and just trying to kind of go at this from as many angles as they could. Absolutely, yeah. Pre- taking it really seriously. Yeah, yeah. Like I, setting up a camp, uh, yeah. you know, like a base camp in their living room to or, try and get tickets. Or back in the day, you'd queue up outside like HMV or whatever. Yeah. And you'd be there for hours. You'd, you'd maybe camp overnight. These yeah. days, you can't do that anymore. So. iPhone launches were a big one. Yeah, as well, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So nowadays, yeah, the the, the reality is you're going to have multiple devices, and you're going to be you're going to be logging on at nine or mm. before or whatever. Um, but yeah, I guess going on to my experience with this now. So yeah, I woke up at about half seven, and I was like, you know what, I've got loads of time. I'll log in <laughs> at about eight o'clock, maybe yeah. quarter past eight. Immediately, I realized this wasn't good, and it wasn't like anything I'd done before when looking for tickets. Because right. at eight fifteen, both Ticketmaster and Gigs and Tour were down completely. Okay, is that um, was that? Did you have a plan of which one you were going to go to first then, or did you just go to all pl- them? So my plan was I had two laptops and my phone, right. and I thought I'll do one laptop on ki- Ticketmaster, one yeah. on Gigs and Tours. My phone, I'll just like flip. Did you between. try one of the laptops on a VPN or Wi-Fi or? Uh... No. So basically, if you have a VPN on, I believe Ticketmaster will just boot you immediately. Really? So you can't right. have any of that stuff. To switched on you have to be really careful you don't have like iCloud uh re- I don't know what it's called the iCloud thing that's just on you could have connected to the office via VPN that probably wouldn't have flagged it as a VPN because it just shows up as like you connected from the office oh, right, it's okay. a tip for future maybe yeah maybe I'll come the, in. one of the things I mean I've tried this I, my resonance with this is like trying to get Glastonbury tickets oh yeah yeah very I similar. went in yeah. t- 2016 and I've tried every year since and I've yeah. not managed to get no. them which really frustrates me and it's the same thing yeah 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 which kind of like questions, is it time for an overhaul of these things? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I tried for Glastonbury tickets this year mm. and it was over and done in by about an hour. Yeah. Tickets were sold Well, that's out. true. This yeah. went on, and I'm not kidding, it, I think they sold out about six o'clock. And that's not because there wasn't the demand. Right. It was just because the systems in place were so bad that it was taking people so long to get through and actually buy tickets. Um, and I was, uh, <clears> I was there till half one. So I spent five hours looking at a screen Mm. Um, and I couldn't do anything else because I was using all my devices to do it. I read a book, but obviously you want to keep an eye on like what's you, you happening. You've got to, got to be on the ball, haven't you? Yeah. Because the thing is, and this happened with my friends a couple of years ago in Glastonbury. We got through to the payment page, put the card details in, yeah. and then it times out yeah. and you're back to square one. Yeah. Really frustrating. Very. Um, so what do you think then is a solution for these sorts of scenarios? Because this is clearly the demand for experiences, I believe, has never been higher. And I think this is partly driven because we were all locked up for two years during yeah, COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now everyone, uh, okay, you know, it was four years ago now. I can't believe it was yeah. four years ago. But I certainly think sort of the last two years since things have kind of got back to quote unquote normal, mm. There's much more of a demand from consumers for experiences. Like you want to go out and do stuff. Mm. And that can be concerts or it could be stuff that you're kind of doing self to keep. You know, I've noticed right here in Manchester where we live, there's so much more to do now in the city centre than there ever was yep, like definitely. five or ten yep. years ago. You know, there's like multiple bowling alleys, entertainment things. You've got like go karts, there's a Crystal Maze experience. There's all kinds of weird and wonderful and mm. wacky things that people want to go and do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they just weren't there 10 years ago. So there's clearly this demand for experiences. like, and But obviously something like Oasis, big global brand. Mm. Um, it's not you know, going to be just people from those areas wanting tickets in those areas. It's exactly. Be people well, it, from all over the world. Well, that's the thing. I guess so. And I, But I, I, I got the impression that most of the people trying to... Most of the demand for tickets was probably UK-based folk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably, yeah. Uh, um, the majority... Um, but I, I have heard instances of people from like North America uh, buying tickets, mm. um, which is strange because I think the plan probably is they're going to do a, a worldwide tour. I would have thought so. Yeah. You know, if they box that off, they might do one the following yeah. year or whatever. But, but It's Oasis. They might break up after two uh, yeah, shows. Well, who so. knows? <laughs> but I mean, this is this is the question. So Because interestingly, one of the, the, the people I saw on the news, there, they were saying actually their friend got tickets from Spain on holiday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, on vacay in Spain. So why why could they get them from Spain, but then the, he couldn't forget get them from the UK? Who knows? It is uh, uh, yeah, and, and like you say, like what is the solution here? And I guess it's tricky, really. I I don't know if I I'm not clever enough to probably have a solution. But the two things I'd probably say are one, the mm. system just seems wildly outdated. Um, so for this to happen every time, pretty much, I've never hear about Ticketmaster coping well with these sort well, of things. Well, I just what, what I don't understand is these are really big companies, right? Yeah. And obviously, we we're a small company in comparison to these mm. kind of guys, and we have a team of you know en- um, engineers, like web developers, and and with Radio.co, we process like millions and millions of listeners every day. Yeah, yeah. and we're used to that, and like. 
you have what is known as sort of scaling issues without getting too technical. Like when we first launched, we had a few bumps along the road, yeah, so yeah. to speak, where it was a bit, you know, things weren't working as well as they should be. You suddenly get an influx of uh, traffic and it kind of knocks everything over. However, now we're pretty... The system has been engineered to design to deal with a lot of, you know, be really resilient. And if we get a spike in traffic, it doesn't really affect us. I don't understand why they, they, these companies, when you think about how like many requests, say Google and Facebook and Instagram mm. are dealing with every day, this in comparison is tiny yeah. like, in terms of yeah, like yeah, web yeah. traffic. So why can't they build systems that work, number one, under this demand? That's just solving the first problem of mm. not being able to access the websites. There is so many, there's so much information and tools and um, you know services which allow you to do this now without yeah, really too much trouble. Not a problem. So I find that astonishing. Like, mm. why They haven't just got the right teams in place or the right know-how to make it re- more resilient. Yeah. We know when there's, there's a few hundred thousand people trying to get tickets. And we're not talking like billions of requests a minute like Google deal with. You know, seems a bit odd. The second thing is like, you know, just basically creating some kind of um, more like a managed system. You know, like very basic level. You know, you go and you get like a a queue number or something and you get that in advance and you then get like a, an email or something. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. a kind of was like a raffle or, you know, you express your interest, you get a queue number and then you get an email when your ticket's yeah, available. Yeah. And then if you don't click that link within, say, half an hour, you the tickets it. go on to someone yeah. else. There's so many different ways of approaching this, I think, yeah. from a technical perspective that could that would be fair well, to consumers. There was a pre-sale uh, which was completely random. You signed up with mm. your email address and then some people got sent uh, email saying you, you're free or whatever. Mm. But from what I understand, that was a minuscule amount of tickets in comparison to what went on sale on Saturday. Yeah. Um, not many people got those. So how did you get it? What was the, what was the magic source of being in the pre- pre-sale? And like, what, what, I think why it, didn't everyone just do that? Well, I think everyone probably did sign up to it yeah. who were interested, but obviously only a, a fraction, I don't know the actual number, but a fraction of people actually got contacted and were given right. the pre-sale access. <clears throat> um, but yeah, no, I think, I, I mean, I, I actually didn't say, but I eventually got tickets. Um, and the way I did that was I was on the Oasis Reddit Mm, okay. <laughs> just like looking at all these angry conspiracy comments. theories yeah. and things like hey, here's how you can hack this but system. literally that's what started happening yeah, and yeah. as I was becoming more and more desperate that's what I did and one of them worked and that was how I got tickets what was it? basically I gave up on Ticketmaster altogether I did actually get through through the queuing system I think I was like 75,000 in the queue got through that after about a few hours and yeah. it booted me out it was rubbish yeah. gave up on that and then I went on to gigs and tours and like I say it refreshed every 20 seconds so what I did was I saw fi- people figured out that there's probably no queue system here. It's literally just seeing if there's a space for you. Right. So every, instead of every 20 seconds, I just kept pressing refresh over and over again. Oh, and I did right. this for about two hours and eventually oh, wow. <laughs> I got in. So yeah, it worked, but what a terrible system. <laughs> hey, um, a little tech tip. If you do that again, there's probably a browser extension you can download. Oh, there's got to be, Automatically yeah, refresh it every yeah. given number of seconds to save your you, fingers from getting yeah. a repetitive strain injury. I was terrified I was going <laughs> to press refresh when it actually came oh, up. Because I was, yeah, just, I was yeah, in such yeah, a yeah, thing. Yeah. But luckily, But you yeah. literally sat there and did that for two hours. For so two that's hours. some dedication. It was, I, yeah. yeah. But I think the more it went on, the more I was determined. Yeah. Because I was like, I can't And And, and how, what time did you say you get, was it one o'clock? It's about half one. Right, yeah. And you better buy that. That stage you've been up since seven o'clock in the morning and you I've been doing of... it for yeah five hours or so so right, yeah. a lot of mental turmoil absolutely that, yeah. yeah but again I guess going back to how do we solve this issue like you say obviously <laughs> there's the technical side there's I guess got to, there's got to be a cute a fair way of doing it like oh, a yeah, less yeah. sort of like resource intensive just like right okay you've got your registry you've placed in the queue yeah you know maybe you have to submit ID and proof of address or whatever and again you can automate all of that now yeah, can't yeah, you these days definitely. And and just so you can make sure that they're not a bot and they are actually a person wanting a ticket yeah. or not just some a tout, you know, val- validating identity and saying, okay, right, you'll register that address. No one else can register that yep. address, whatever. You know, you get your place in the queue. You then get yeah, a certain yeah. amount of time to redeem it. If you don't, because you're not you're taking her off the ball, that's too too late. But there's all sorts of stuff they could do. They could text you to like let you know that your, yeah. your tickets are, are now available. You've got to click complete your purchase. You've got 20 minutes to do it or whatever. Absolutely. Like, come on then. Uh, what do you guys think? Comment below. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, let, us know. let us know your thoughts. Yeah, because I'm um, sure you'd have thoughts, especially if you were there. Or trying if to get you work for Ticketmaster or like yeah, gigs and tours. What's why going not? On? Like, is there space in the industry to create a new ticketing platform that has all these features and functionality? Well, I don't know. It's, it's so, such a competitive space. And I, I question, right? Why do they need these ticketing companies anyway? Because anyone can just generate a barcode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why not just well, do this, it yourselves? This, like, this goes into the next thing, yeah. I guess something else I want to talk about was 
the Monopoly issue with Ticketmaster. Mm. Ticketmaster just seems to be the default place now that everyone sells tickets, alongside a few others, the smaller ones like gigs and tours. Yeah. And but, I guess the question there is why? Like, why is that the case? And two, yeah. why can't we move away from that? Like, I don't get it because, I, as I say, the, the, fair enough, the technology to actually, like, print tickets, like, just all it is is a unique ID that's yeah, attached yeah. to a transaction. Yeah. If I was Oasis, I'd be selling the tickets myself. Yeah. Cut out the middleman. I don't know why there is this reliance on these third-party companies no. to do this. Because actually, Ticketmaster ain't selling the tickets. It's still Oasis yeah, or whoever yeah. it might be yeah, yeah. promoting and selling the tickets on their own channels, going and doing all the um, you know TV and radio interviews or whatever. Yeah. You know, and again, it's, this is the same for smaller, like much smaller artists as well. I just don't understand the need for these ticketing platforms. No. Well, maybe, you know, certainly when you get into that scale, why don't they just sell them directly? Yeah. Don't know. So I, this... I really can't answer that question. I'd love to know the answer. No, no, definitely. Perhaps you work in the industry and you've, you could tell me, why, yeah. why don't they just build their own platform yeah. to sell tickets? Comment below and let us know. So this is kind of the area that's really sort of struck the news um, surrounding the whole inflated ticket prices and the monopoly stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I've, I've got a couple of quotes from Financial Times on this. And in a statement on Sunday night, Culture Secretary Lisa Nandy said it had been depressing to see vastly inflated prices yeah. excluding ordinary fans from having a chance to enjoy their favourite band live. So obviously that's, that's what goes without saying. Um, so obviously the government's now getting involved in this, the UK government, um, mm. even the Prime Minister's piped in and, and said this this needs to stop. Um, Ticketmaster, they've largely stayed silent on this, as, as have Oasis actually, uh, but Financial Times again, they said um, on its website, Ticketmaster said, prices are adjusted accordingly to supply and demand. The mm. goal is to give fans fair and safe access to the best tickets while enabling artists and other people involved in staging live events to price tickets closer to their true market value. Um, and I guess this goes back to the thing of who's at fault here? Is it Ticketmaster or is it Oasis? Is it the bands or is it... I don't think it's the band. I think it's... it's. A bit, but it's interesting to know these, these dynamic prices. How is that cut? You know, is, there, mm. is that going to Ticketmaster's back pocket or is it going to yeah. be going to Oasis' back pocket or is it they've got agreement And how does that work? Two, like because they, they know it's in demand. And if they're yeah. putting the price up after just like 10 minutes, 30 minutes or something like that, that seems... Like, that's the plan all along, surely. Like Yeah, I mean, it's just like an auction, isn't it? It's like tickets yeah. will go to the highest bidder. Yeah. But, I mean, again, you know, perhaps that would be another, you know, again, you want to make tickets approachable for certain people and, you know, understand all that. But ultimately, these are all businesses. Whether you like it or not, a band or a musician is a business. Yeah. They want to make money and they want to make as much money as they can. And, of course, that's driven by, well, it's another conversation, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Driven by, like, the record labels and everything. Yeah. However, um, you know, you could just say, right, well, like bid on the tickets. Yeah. You know. Um, and I guess that's kind of that's kind of what they want to stop happening. That's why they're trying to do like... But they don't want to stop it because it does happen. Like, this well, is yeah, the thing. Do, they like, want to stop it happening without their involvement. They want they, to appear impartial. Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. why they have the... Yeah. That's maybe why it, it goes back to this, well, why get a middleman involved? The middleman yeah. can be appearing to do the dirty work yeah, for yeah. you. Um, so the last thing I want to say on this before we move on is uh, yeah. I just saw this quote on BBC News that made me laugh. Uh, so BBC News quoted that um, ticketing websites were praised for coping with the enormous demand by Jonathan Brown, Praise. chief executive of the Society of Ticket Agents and Retailers. <laughs> Whoa. I wanted to just dissect that for a second because I kind of thought like, <laughs> What do they have to do to be not praised? <laughs> well, that sounds like, a, <laughs> like the Society of the Tickets, and we'll probably find out he's like the former uh, yeah, CEO something like that, of because Ticketmaster. He barely coped with the enormous demand. In fact, I'd say it didn't cope. So, yeah, that was. Uh, Go and that was speak to Facebook and Google. They speak. They delete. They deal with such enormous demand on a yeah. second by second basis. I know. Yeah. No, um, you know. <laughs> he also said, uh, interestingly, Jonathan Brown. This is he said yeah. he stressed that the prices were set by the band. So that's a kind of a sense that Ticketmaster's blaming Oasis, Oasis. It stayed silent, but I guess would blame Ticketmaster. So who's to blame on this? Again, we'd love to know what you think of this whole yeah. let's go. Um, let us know in the comments or send us an email at hey at insider.audio. Um, yeah, we'd love to, love to hear from you. Yeah, very loose intro to the, the audio world there. But, yeah. you know, ultimately yeah. Oasis is audio. And I'm, do you know what I'm going to do, Rowan? I'm going to yeah. just watch it when it comes out on Sky or Netflix yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. By the was, documentary. That yeah, yeah. I'll watch the documentary make. and yeah. I'll watch the gig, and that'll be that'll be me. Yeah. I, uh, you know, from the comfort of my living room. Yeah. Why not? And then you'll, you'll probably do that as well. on you as well. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. I will have no, no, no. Uh, yeah. No, no crowds because this is the other thing as well. Like these things are going to be oversubscribed and mental, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. But yeah. I'm sure it'll be good. It'd be for yeah. good if you've got tickets. Well done. I'm sure you're going to have a great time. Yeah. 
Yeah, see you Where there. did you... We got tickets for in Manchester here. Yes, yeah. Heaton Park, Manchester. Yeah, because so a couple of my friends good. got tickets in London, even though they're here. So I don't know if yeah. it was just... They, they thought it would be easy It might to... just be in all that was left or something, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Right, yeah. moving on then, yeah? Moving on. Uh, so next up, we wanted to talk about TikTok. Um, now, a lot of you might be groaning at that because it really does divide uh, people. Mm. A lot of the time, based on your age. Uh, obviously, the younger generations have really embraced TikTok. Older generations are embracing it, but slower. Yeah. Um, some people still hate it. What, what do you think? About it? I I'm I don't hate it, uh, but I I'll be honest, I'm not particularly engaged with it. Mm. I did uh, create a profile. I started posting some content. When yeah, I say yeah. I really didn't do much of a good job, and I should have stuck out it for longer. Back in like 2020, I think 21. Yeah, that was. It was during lockdown, but I had, like, maybe posted like 20 videos, mm. and then kind of gave up because I wasn't getting attraction, which is probably the wrong attitude to have. However. Um, yeah, I know. It, that... it can be disheartening, though, can't it? When you're yeah, when you're yeah, of course, you've got to stick out it. Um, and actually, now I look back in on it, that was probably a good time to actually get in because it was still relatively mm, unsaturated yeah. and uncompetitive. Nowadays, obviously, everyone's jumped on that bandwagon yeah, yeah. and it's busy. I think it's a good thing. I mean, I think there's been um, examples of similar products in the past. I don't know if you remember Vine. Vine, by Twitter. yeah, I used to love Vine. Yeah. Um, I don't know why they like if they stuck at that, they could have probably made yeah. it into TikTok. Did they get bought? Did someone buy it? I think Twitter bought it and then they just, then they just disbanded it yeah. because I think they said it was costing too much to run. Yeah. Like I think they didn't have ads for it uh, or, or they hadn't sussed no, out how they were going to monetize no. it and it was just getting like hammered by, you know, people watching these clips. But of course, that's kind of, um, you know, I guess Twi t TikTok was probably like that to begin with. I mean, yeah. Didn't, you know, obviously it's kind of littered with ads now, but yeah. to begin I mean, with, I think it wasn't. It TikTok just... has been around a long time in different forms. I can't remember what its original name was back when yeah. it was more just like a Chinese based <coughs> brand. But yeah, so it's been around a long time. It's taken a while for it to really take off. But obviously now we're in a world where it's, I don't know for sure, but it's probably one mm. of the biggest social platforms. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's massive, isn't it? Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what we want to talk about more specifically is music within TikTok and music marketing. Yeah. Uh, because you may have noticed from like Sabrina Carpenter, Charlie XCX, uh, Chappelle Ro Roan, is that, how, is that how you say your name? Do you know don't know. No? I don't even know who these people are. Well, they're huge uh, <laughs> and they're massive on TikTok. Um, yeah. And it's starting to become the case that popularity on TikTok also translates to popularity in the real world. Oh yeah. Or more specifically, popular, popular songs on TikTok translate into songs in the charts in the real world or on the radio. You might, have, you might be hearing songs on the radio all the time now and think, mm. oh, I heard this on TikTok last week. Um, so yeah, we wanted to sort of talk about, is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? Weigh up the positives and negatives. Um, and according to Euronews, in 2023, and uh, based on TikTok's annual report, the year on TikTok Music Report tracks the effect of its platforms on the music industry. And this year, 13 of the 16 UK number ones were paired with viral moments on the platform. Uh, similarly, 13 of the 18 songs on the top in the US Billboard's Hot 100, that's a bit of a mouthful, uh, also follow trends driven by TikTok. So right. it's clear to see that you do well on TikTok, you do well within the music industry as yeah. a whole. Um, so yeah, positives and negatives. What, what are your thoughts on this? What's your positives? What well, our positives of? is I think um, it's a relatively low barrier to entry. You know, mm. Anyone yeah, yeah. can upload content to TikTok. And if you're lucky, you can get some serious traction. Yeah. And what I think is really interesting about music on TikTok is not just actually the artists themselves posting it, but it's the fact that you become, become viral by being a kind of a, part of a backing track yeah. to other people's content. Yeah, yeah. That's what's unique about this, because if you think about it, the way that music's been marketed, it does just sort of move sideways. There's always the latest thing, mm -hmm. right? So you think about it, obviously, 50 years ago, like Beatles and stuff, it was re driven by radio. Yep. And then it moved on to a little bit of TV, like yep. things like music videos um, and sort of shows like Top of the Pops and stuff. And then obviously when the internet came around and it started off, um, you know, kind of being illegal by like things like Napster yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, Kazar and yeah. LimeWire. But actually they were still tools to market songs. Okay, they were acquiring the songs illegally. People mm. were downloading them without paying, uh, and it was before obviously streaming services. But then you know it evolved and became more sort of socialized. So like yeah. MySpace, remember that? Yeah. Uh, people on TikTok won't remember MySpace. No. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a huge. Like when I was at university, um, it was just like that. Facebook was just becoming a thing, but certainly there was no TikTok. There was no YouTube. Uh, but MySpace, you could upload music to it. You could have videos and songs on there and you could have a background song playing when you hit your profile. Mm. It became this massive tool. 
uh, to sort of promote music. And there was lots of bands that were breaking just on MySpace, which yeah. was really interesting. So TikTok's just moved, you know, we moved it's down the line. YouTube way. came around. That sort of started becoming yeah, a thing. Yeah. Facebook also has played a little part. Instagram. Well, like but, famously, people have became massive from YouTube in the yeah, early days. Like yeah. Justin Bieber's always the one yeah, that comes, yeah, of course, to, comes yeah. to mind. And that's happening with TikTok now. So it's not new. It's just say. a sort of different form, isn't yeah. it? Because this is the thing. I think, you know, looking at all these previous examples, uh, you weren't able to say use a song as a as a clip to a performance like a dance mm. or you know a background music of yeah, your day yeah. you know when you're out you know you watch like these travel vloggers or whatever they've mm. always got like these songs as the background when yeah. they're like you know showing you around the cruise ship or whatever yeah, it might yeah. be uh, so that's that's cool and I think I think that's a positive you know yeah, like yeah. it's just but it is another channel of marketing um, uh, what are the negatives in your opinion because I don't really I can't think of it well, off the top of my head. I guess one of the I guess one of the positives is also one of the negatives. So I'd say a positive of this is it gives uh, creators more um, chance to monetize their songs better because in the the current state of things, Spotify or Apple Music or something like that takes quite a large cut. So yeah. artists don't make much money from streaming. Mm. Um, if you add TikTok to the into the equation, it's just another way of making some money off your songs if mm. those, that song goes viral or something like that. Right, but that can also be a negative because it now means that um, artists are being forced really to use TikTok because yeah. that's kind of what they have to do uh, to make a song go viral or to make money. Um, so they, again, it's a sort of monopoly situation. Yes, like Ticketmaster yes. we were talking about before, TikTok has yeah. now got the monopoly on music discovery, is it? Yeah. What you're trying to yeah. sort of say? And, and record labels yeah. know this now and they are looking for... In, I've heard of cases where record labels are looking for how well you're doing on TikTok before the actual song, the music. They'll sign you. Yeah. Right. So the the viral sort of side of things is becoming more important than the music, uh, which you could say has always been the case with like, I don't know, a, a band or a, a girl group, for instance, how like X Factor and stuff like that. Back in the day, they yeah. were sort of judged on how they looked or the sort of vibe they gave off before mm. their music. Um, but this is sort of taking it to the next um, degree and... Yeah, it's it's so it's kind of TikTok in a way is making it easier for smaller acts to become big, but it's also now making it harder for people to sort of stand out with just their music. Yeah. Um, and I guess another thing as well is now big established artists like Charlie XCX, for instance, who's been around for a long time, mm. uh, and she's fully embraced TikTok. There's been the whole Brat Summer thing this year, and that's been huge for her, and it's done really well for her. Um, but now big artists are also using TikTok. It means that the smaller acts that maybe were going viral in the early days when the big acts weren't there are now struggling to cut through. Um, and again, this is similar to what happened on YouTube. Like people like Justin Bieber became massive yeah. back in the day. And then big artists came along with like the Vivo channels and stuff like that. And it became harder, I guess. More people using it. So inevitably it's going to become harder. Right. Um, so yeah, there is, I guess... There's a few different negatives in that sort of area. Um, and also, I don't know if you've... Obviously, if you're not using TikTok, it's, you might not know about this, but... Yeah. Music... Well, I do go on it. I just... I'm not... You're not It's hooked. not a day, part of my yeah, daily routine. Yeah, I'm enough. still on Instagram stories. Yeah, yeah. I'm still in 2018. Well, you, you probably have heard of this then. Yeah. The, the idea of speeding up and slowing down music tracks in the background. Yeah. So you're... It's quite... When it first happened, I was like, what, what? the hell is I, Yeah, I'm on? kind of like... Bit, it's, I still find that. it strange, but it's become more normal now, I guess. Um, and artists are actually, they've realized this. They've realized that people are doing this. So they're recording them in slower. Yeah, they're doing, they're bringing out separate versions of a song. So why are people doing that then, <laughs> I <laughs> broadly? Don't I don't know. It's That's just to kind of like, what, to sort of make it sound like a kind of like high pitched chipmunky type yeah, sound effect. I don't or get like, it. I don't, really yeah, I feel like maybe we're too old to understand. I think probably. But um, yes, yeah. yeah, so I actually, there's a new <laughs> song from Little, the Jade from Little Mix, who is called like Angel of My Dreams. And I noticed that the song itself, not there aren't separate versions. This was one version of this song. Mm. And the song starts off really slow. Then it gets quick. Then it's slow again. And you could say, oh, that's just how music works, tempos and whatever. Mm. But like the first time I heard it, I was like, this sounds like a TikTok song. It's been designed. It's, yeah. To, yeah. I, I, I get that. I think there are... There are there are artists that are thinking about yeah because obviously it's like based on like loops and stuff as well yeah, isn't yeah. it like you've got a certain amount of time I don't know how it, it, is there a time limit at TikTok now there I used think it's to like be five minutes these days yeah. right so it's gone up but basically still if you people people are doing these little, little dances and stuff yeah yeah uh, the viral yeah trends. you've got like thirty seconds or something yeah. so you're thinking about okay well has my song got like a really like satisfying yeah. thirty second loop that yeah, people yeah. can use or like. Yeah, just how the the song is constructed. I think that, 
I mean, they're clever people doing that. Yeah, it's clever. You know, it's just you've got to be... I think this is a thing as musicians. I'm not a musician, no. but like you got to stay on top of what people want and trends. Yeah. And there's, you see, you see, like I don't know. There's artists over time that are still around. They're still prominent, but they're just not releasing music like they used mm. to. And I just think, well, is that because they're keeping up with the trends, or is it just because they like ran out of ideas yeah. or whatever? Yeah. I mean, the I cynic know. in me goes, oh, this is, I hate this. I yeah. hate this so much because it's the 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 whole point of this is the music, right? And that's kind of being lost. But then. Yeah, like you say, it's clever and it needs, it has to happen, I guess. If This is just the way it is now. If, if artists want to do well mm. and keep making music, this is what they have to do. Um, and I guess you can't can't really knock that in a way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there is, there's so many songs now where you hear them on the radio yeah. over and over again. And the chorus is really catchy. It's really cool. You love it. The rest of the songs just sort of like, eh. But that, that again, is a way because they know that the chorus is the only bit that's going to be played on TikTok. So put a lot of effort into that. And you're gonna have a viral song, mm. um, and there's loads of songs at the moment, like the Sabrina Carpenter songs, for instance. They are huge, um, and a lot of that is owed to the success on TikTok. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's it's a tricky one. And then again, one more positive I have not mentioned: TikTok has overwhelmingly given more female artists a voice. Um, as we know, the music industry is still quite um, backwards, I guess, in a sense, in terms of. Pretty male dominated. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but the majority, and this is according to Euronews, the majority of the 10 most followed artists on TikTok are female. Uh, and it also goes on to say there's a large influence of K-pop uh, over yeah. contemporary music. So again, that's a that is a positive. It's it's giving more female artists a voice, and it's also <coughs> giving more of an international um, voice, I guess, to music. It's not just Western music, American music, UK music. It's it's more worldwide. Um, K-pop's an interesting one because we have a client who runs a K-pop focused radio station. Oh yeah. And yeah. They, they when they first signed up which was a number of years ago this was before sort of BTS and everything had taken off. Mm. I didn't really know what it was but I was like wow these guys are absolutely killing it. They yeah. are just getting lots and lots yeah, and yeah. lots of traffic and listeners to their station. And so we sort of like kind of asked them like why is this? You mm. know what are you doing which is different and what is this K-pop? And they kind of explained that it's you know um that each of the artists has got these big followings and like yeah. they were leveraging the um, the artist fan bases to like basically build their radio station and get more traffic, get more listeners and get these kind of people engaged where they come back and listen again and again. And we're playing these fan bases off against each other saying, well, if you vote for your artist, we'll play it more. Yeah, yeah. All of this stuff. And I was like, this is really clever. And I think, yeah. you know, you could apply this to sort of any market. But what was really interesting was at that stage, I'd never heard of K-pop and I was just like, these guys are, are absolutely smashing it, um, and doing really, really well with with the sort of the branding and everything just was felt right for what they were trying to achieve. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's, there's definitely like ways as like businesses and marketers that we can kind of tie into this stuff. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. fascinating. I find this stuff fascinating. And, um, like I say, I mean, neither of us are massive TikTok fans, but you kind of have to use it. You can't ignore you it. You can't ignore it. It's... And we've had some hit hits recently. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just random, like, just stuff that we post quite regularly on TikTok across like, how, our How many views? Because and... you said, the, I remember you saying the other day on Slack that there was like, wow, one of our videos has yeah. had like, was it like lots of views? Like 800,000. 800,000 views. And yeah. this is the thing, like, for a small business to be able to go and get that kind of reach. Yeah, on a was... 40 second video. Yeah. An ad, essentially. Was yeah, an ad, yeah, but... unheard of. But I mean, but we couldn't really put a finger on exactly why it had no. taken off. It just had so. And it happened again shortly afterwards yeah um, maybe that's again. the algorithm starting to say oh this account's worth yeah, giving yeah. some traction because this is the thing i think with the like the other thing same with youtube you are sort of tied to the algorithm and you can't you you know posting good quality stuff doesn't necessarily guarantee no, your success no. um it just sometimes you are reliant on the algorithm saying actually this account's worthwhile yeah. sending traffic to and once you're in its good books you could yeah. potentially get you know, more and more traffic. And this has happened to us on YouTube and stuff as yeah. well. And it can come for a different for a variety of different ways. It can come from having like one absolutely yeah. banger video that just does great and all of a sudden your channel is now getting lots of attention. Or it could be consistency over five years. You might do ter like getting terrible results over the first five years and all of a sudden the algorithm's like, oh, you've been posting regularly, we'll give you some attention. It, it, it can be strange. It's, just, it's a hard one to work out. But yeah, I, I guess the main bit of advice is to just keep going with... Um, these sort of channels, especially TikTok, because you never know mm. when you might get that one hit that uh, gets you there. Interesting stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um, so before we wrap up, um, I always like to end Audio Insider with a with a little fact of the day. Oh yes, uh, fact of the day slash future slash past uh, for all the 
the thing. OMC, fact of the day, slash future, slash past. Incredible. Uh, so I'm going to turn my screen because I, I like to I like to surprise the guest with the fact. Uh, if I can find the fact. <laughs> Where's the fact gone? Here it is. Okay. Here's the fact. Cool. Go on. So uh, now we like listen to music. That's yep. clear through this, uh, and we like to listen to music while we work. Mm. I don't. Know, do you like to do that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. So uh, it's widely encouraged as well by employers to play music uh, to their employees because it keeps morale high, you know, people having fun while they work. Mm. Uh, but in 1978, studies by a Polish vocalist called Michael Wiz Wiznowski, yeah. I'm so sorry for butchering that, uh, found that one type of work in particular really benefited from music. You got, have you got any ideas what kind of work that could wow. be? Wow. Right. It's very, very um, broad, I know, but... Agriculture. Kind of. <laughs> nearly. Do you want to be more specific? No, farming. What, like... what kind of worker? Oh, um, I don't know. People driving tractors. No, I've never heard of them driving any tractors. No. It's cows. Really? Yes. Uh, cows like music. <laughs> um, so he played some classical music to his cows and yeah. found that they produced more milk because of this uh, and other studies since have been conducted and found very similar results um, according to Vet Help Direct this is because animals experiencing high levels of stress will produce high levels of ca ca cortisol not, I'm not a scientist uh, within their bodies uh, and this so called stress hormone interferes with milk production yeah. um, so have you got any guesses what kind of music they like? Uh, classical music. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's up there. But it's, say if you were going to, I don't know, you were going to visit a cow this, <laughs> this evening and you I were going to... Yeah, right. yeah, you were going to put on a bit of music for him. <laughs> for her. Or particularly her if we're getting milk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what, what kind of music wouldn't you play? I don't want to be too bullish. <laughs> uh, I don't know, like something like heavy, like heavy metal or rap or rock yeah, or like yeah. yeah. So uh, a study by Kemp. I don't know who Kemp is. That's all. That's all I found. He knows uh, a lot about cows. He does. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He found that the behaviour vary between genres. Um, <laughs> this made me laugh. They were on edge with heavy metal. Uh, just, uh, what's a cow's favourite type of music? <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is going to keep happening, is it? Yeah, probably. Uh, they were confused by <laughs> rap. I don't know how a cow looks confused. I, but well, it's because they can't understand. I mean, it's because it's words, isn't it? I, I would think it's like the melodies that resonate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, they enjoyed country, classical, and yeah. reggae. Right. Uh, but <laughs> Lullaby was almost deemed too successful because they started falling asleep. Wow. So there you there we go. go. I mean, do you know, this is interesting because I have a doggy, and when we go out, I put music, classical music normally, oh, yeah, like yeah, Radio yeah. 3, BBC yeah. Radio 3. Or, don't we, um, have a, we have a station, don't we? for dogs yeah or there is music, music for, for pets like yeah. yeah uh and yeah so i i just do this it's like just because i heard this that it's good keep some company yeah. when you're out you know if you're yeah. out having dinner or whatever Absolutely. for a couple of hours just don't leave them alone in silence put some classical music on but I guess it works for all sorts of animals. Yeah, absolutely. So there we go. There's a fact of the day that was actually might be useful Audio. for you. Yeah. OMC, fact of the day, slash future, slash past. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching this first uh, episode of Audio Insider. The first episode back, I should say. Uh, we will be uploading regularly. Uh, so make sure to hit subscribe and follow us on all of your podcasty platforms, such as Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, etc. Um, yeah, and also, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review, if you could. Um, I'm going to be looking through the reviews, and I will read out the best ones. We might even send you a party popper. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe we will. We probably won't, but maybe we'll we will. We'll just keep them for ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll we'll do a party popper for every review. That could <laughs> there be fun. we go. That would be good. Yeah, lovely. We'll read some reviews out and do a party popper. Absolutely. Pop Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much everything for today. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching or listening. And All yeah, right. we'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Bye-bye. See ya.